In this video, I'm gonna show how I took a stock EV charger and doubled its charging rate. Now, most EV vehicles, if you were to go purchase one, come with some sort of charger so you can charge the car. It might look something like this. This is the default charger that came with the Chevy Bolt. And typically you would plug this into a normal 120 volt outlet, plug your car in, and then wait a very long time for it to charge. Cause this can put at max 12 amps out on 120 volts, which for this car would take a very long time to charge. However, there's a little secret about a charger like this is it can actually handle a 240 volt input. And when you apply 240 volts to a charger like this, you can essentially increase the charge rate of your vehicle dramatically. So I'm gonna show you how I did that in my case. Now specifically, I'm working with chargers that came stock with the Chevy Bolt EV and the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid, plug-in hybrid, Fev, I guess. And both of these chargers work fine for this. They both come stock to plug into a 120 volt outlet. However, they both can handle a 240 volt feed. Now my guess is, is that most stock chargers that come with most EVs can likely handle 240 volt input as well, considering most of the world, or in other countries at least, they use 240 volts as their kind of standard for their household electricity. Having said that, before attempting this with any charger, you need to look up the specs of your specific charger, make sure it can handle a 240 volt input in order to benefit from what I'm about to show. So in order to do this, I essentially had to install an outlet, an outlet that would provide 240 volts to this particular plug. The easiest way to do this is to keep the outlet as close to your electrical panel as possible. So I decided I was going to place my new outlet just under the junction box right about there. Now to do this I needed some things. I needed some 10 gauge Romex, needed an old work junction box, a 240 volt breaker, a 240 volt plug, the trim cover, a meter, and some screwdrivers. First things first, I turn off the power and then I take off the panel cover to the junction box. It's important to note here, depending on how your box works, these loads can still be live, so you don't want to touch any of those. You can get shocked very badly. Make sure power is killed. I'm going to go ahead and put my new 240 volt breaker there. And then I can't come out the sides because there's wood studs there, but I can come underneath because there's some space there. It's a little busy on this side and in the middle, so I think I will come out through one of the cutouts right about there. Come down and put it there. So I take the junction box and I trace around it in the position where I want it. Then I take a razor knife and I score those lines several times until I can pop the entire hole out. And now I have space for my junction box. And I'm gonna, this is the tab I'll get out of the box. To do this, you can usually pry under with a screwdriver, get them to pop up, and then just kind of wiggle them free but now we have a frayed edge. So we're gonna go ahead and need to use a clamp here to keep the wire from getting messed up. Now I'm putting this wire clamp on upside down because it's the only way I can get it to attach to the box without cutting a big hole in the drywall. I don't know if this is okay by code. Someone in the comments, please let me know, but I think it should be okay. So I basically slide the wire through up into the panel. I put on the threaded nut and then in this case, I'm just going to screw that down in an upside down position, but the wire seems like it should be nice and protected once it's tightened down. Now I poke a little hole in the junction box to get the wire through, and I slide the wire through the junction box and push the box back into the hole. And then I can just snug it into place. Now this junction box works by having these wings that flare out when you screw it in and it kind of pinches it to the drywall, making it nice and snug. Now that it's in there, I went ahead and I stripped the Romex sheathing very carefully using a razor to score down the middle lightly and then peel off that insulation, exposing the wires. Now I need to strip a little bit off of the edge, just pop it off there, about a three quarters of an inch on both the white and black wires. Then I went ahead and I put loops in all the wires to make it a little bit easier to attach to the plug I was going to install. Now the first thing I did here was I attached the bare copper wire to the green screw, that's the grounding screw of the outlet, 
and both the black and the white wires will be hot wires in this situation because this is a 240 volt plug. So they can go to either screw. Both the gold screws can take the black or the white wire, doesn't really matter. The key is to make sure these wires are nice and snug. And the white wire, same thing, just put on the other side and tighten it down nice and snug. And then I just had to place the outlet back in the box carefully and then screw it into position. And then finally just put on the trim cover and you gotta be careful that you don't want to screw them too tight because they will break. And there it is. Now I gotta attach the other side to the breaker box and to the breaker itself. Again, I need to strip the wire after cutting it to length and then kind of get it in position, cut it again to a better length. And then I need to strip the edge of those wires. And then what I'm gonna do here is stick the new wires in the new breaker just kind of by sliding them through there and tightening it down. Now this white wire is a hot wire in this case, so I went ahead and I marked it with some black tape to denote that. And then each wire goes into one screw on the 240 volt breaker and snugs down. And then I make sure it's extra snug by using a bigger screwdriver. And then the ground wire will go into this ground bar here. That's important to note that you want to put the ground wire in the ground bar, not necessarily the neutral bar, depending on your situation. On some panels, a neutral bar and ground bar will be the same, but in this panel it's not because it's an isolated panel. And then I pop the breaker into place and it fits nice and snug. Now the power back on, I can turn it on and then I check the outlet and now I have 240 volts. Last thing, just need to make space for that new breaker, so I just kind of pry out these little plugs here, and then now I should be able to put the panel back on, screw it back to place, and voila, there is a new plug. Not too bad. Now that the plug's in, I still need a way to plug this charger into it, and as you can see, we still have a 120 volt standard outlet plug on it, and this will not fit in that plug I just installed. So in order to do this, I made a special connector that would basically change this fitting to the fitting that goes into the 240 volt plug. And I did it by using a very thick extension cord. So I took a 12 gauge heavy duty extension cord and I got a 240 volt plug. And basically I was just gonna cut the 120 volt plug off and then splice in the new 240 volt plug. And so I basically had to dismantle the new plug head, slide that on the extension cord. And then I basically needed to strip the wires about three quarters of an inch back. And then I went ahead and twisted them together to make them nice and clean. And then I had attached a green wire to the ground screw. And then both the white and black wires are hot, so it didn't matter which gold screw they went to. And I just snugged them down into those screws there. And here it is. The trick here is to make sure everything is nice and snug and not loose. And then it's pretty easy. I just had to slide the housing back on and then snug it down with the screws. And then also to make sure that the clamp on the plug itself was nice and tight so the wires didn't pull out. And there we go. Now we have a 240 volt plug with a traditional 120 volt female head. Now that I've made this plug, it's very important that I only use this plug for this EV charger. If we were to take any other appliance and plug it into this, what looks like a typical 110, 120 volt outlet plug, it would fry pretty much any 120 volt appliance we would stick into it. So in this case, whatever adapter you would make that would go to your EV charger that plugs into a 240 volt circuit is something you can't use on anything that's 120 because you could cause damage, even potentially a fire. So it's very important that whatever adapter is made to go from the 120 plug to the 240 volt plug is used only on this EV car charger. So this is my stock 120 volt bolt EV charger. I'm gonna start by plugging it into a 120 volt outlet. It's working fine. I'm gonna plug it into the Pacifica Hybrid and I wanna see what kind of charge I'm getting. When I look at the display, I'm not seeing anything register under the battery. But I do see that I have a seven hour charge at 120 volts. It's just such a low amount, it's not registering over a thousand watts to be registered here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the new 240 volt plug into the new 240 volt outlet. Looks like it's working okay so far. I'm gonna plug that into the stock bolt charger. 
and everything's still looking good so far. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back into the Pacifica Hybrid again. And now take a look at what we're seeing. Now we're seeing a 2000 watt read on this display. And then when I go back and look at the charging display over here, I see that we're showing 240 and only a three hour charge. So over twice the speed of the stock charger. So that's pretty cool. Although I think most people at their main residence will probably go ahead and invest the money and get a higher amperage charger, something like 30 amps plus, those chargers will charge your cars much faster than this stock charger can do even with this modification. However, maybe you want to have your, your main more expensive charger at home to do your faster charging, but you might want to install something like this at your office location and or another house you may have. So when you drive to that facility, you can go ahead and, and plug in the kind of top you off, so to speak, with that pretty decent rate that comes with a stock charger. Now there's another way you can do this. You can get these little converter plugs offline and I'll leave a link to all this stuff down below. But essentially this is a plug that will plug into the 240 volt plug and then have a female side where you can plug in that 120 volt plug. In this case, the ones I'm able to find are rated at 15 amps, which is probably fine because I don't think we'd pull more than 12 amps out of this system, at least using the chargers I'm talking about. However, I like to go with that shorter extension cord method I showed because those are thicker wires and that particular plug and hardware is rated for a little bit higher amperage. So I prefer what I showed in this video, although I have used these plugs without any issue for quite some time as well. So very cool we have this option and I hope this was helpful or at least insightful to some of you guys out there. If I send anything that's not very accurate or even up to code, please share it in the comments below to make myself aware and other watchers of this video. So thanks for your time. If you're interested, please consider subscribing and give the video a thumbs up. I'm Joe Kistel.